but Netflix, I'm talking to you. Even you, Amazon. Okay, I'm talking to you bitches. If y'all don't grab this whole debauchery of, of Bobby Womack, Sam Cook, Linda Cook, Barbara Cook, Cecil Womack, and Curtis Womack, y'all is tripping. Curtis told Unsung he fought Mary in self-defense. You didn't start no stuff with Mary, he said. You would be fighting her to dot, dot, dot. Make sure she didn't dot, dot, dot. She'll really mess you up. During one argument, Curtis said Mary started dancing around like Muhammad Ali, encouraging him to fight her. When he started laughing at her, he said she got real mad. Pulled him by the hair, split his earlobe by pulling off an earring he was wearing, and then ran out of the apartment. He said that when the couple argued, they would get into wrestling and scuffling matches. Mary was a strong woman, you know. If she put something in her hand that she might hit him with, he said, I would run out the door. Now, remember, one of her exes had said that Mary ran down there to the hotel where he was working with an artist because he was a producer. I forget the name of the dude, my bad. But Murray had broke a glass and went after her dude with it. After about a year after Murray and Curtis moved in together and after, in Murray words, having an argument and some physical fights with him, she tried to hurt herself a second time. I was just torn down and depressed. I still wasn't able to cope with how we had gotten together. Cecil and Curtis and me, the triangle was still in my mind. I couldn't deal with it. Not only did Mary feel guilty, she had started taking prescription drugs, including sleeping pills again, to ease the pain. They didn't help. So I took some more pills, she said. This time, Curtis was in the house when Mary went into the bathroom to take a shower, took some pills, and collapsed. In spite of their verbal and physical battles, Mary and Curtis were together off and on almost to the end of Mary's life. During their first 10 years, the couple broke up three times for as long as three months on each occasion. Nevertheless, Murray said they always got back together after their breakups. Each reunion occurred because she thought Curtis had changed, although she didn't specify in what way. However, their life together remained rocky. It also had its high spots. At one point during their years together when they were living in the L.A. area, Mary proposed to Curtis that they move to West Hollywood. She liked this beautiful apartment there that had this Hawaiian garden look to it, Curtis said. When we got there, it had a hairdresser in it, and all these guys were jumping in the pool and washing around in there. I was thinking, where's the women? Where is the women? Mary was saying, isn't it beautiful? And I was saying, yeah, but there's something about this place I can't put my finger on. When Curtis told others that he and Wells had moved to West Hollywood, they said, West Hollywood? Womack, you ain't turned over, have you? He responded, say what? And they told him, that's a gay area, man. The mayor's even gay. They must be talking about milk. In 1979, two years after his divorce from Mary, Cecil made a spectacular second marriage. It emphasized his immersion in the music business where serial or unusual marriages are as common as they are in Hollywood and the difficulties celebrities encounter when they try to find loving partners outside their inner circle. First, a little history. More than a dozen years earlier, singer Sam Cooke, the Valentino's mentor, had been shot to death in Los Angeles. According to the official account, the gun was fired by a motel manager after Sam raced downstairs and into her office naked but for a sports jacket in pursuit of a woman who had stolen his money and the rest of his clothes. In 1965, three months after Sam's death, Bobby Womack, the third oldest Womack brother, married Barbara Cook, Sam's widow. The couple divorced in 1970. In his 2006 autobiography, Bobby Womack attributed the split to Barbara's discovery that he had begun having sex with one of Barbara's 
and Sam's daughters. The woman whom Cecil married in 1979 was the former stepdaughter of Bobby Womack, his own former stepniece, Linda Cook, who was now 26. Many people would find Cecil's marriage to Linda as shocking as they found Curtis's relationship with Mary. Curtis put forward a charitable theory about both relationships, however. It was go with who you really like at the time. Friendly Junior's analysis is probably the most accurate as far as it went. Cecil was devastated by Mary and Curtis. Mary was the first and the only girl that I knew Cecil to be serious about. He never had experience with any women. When the door was open, when Mary left, Cecil was looking for someone to fill the void, and Linda was it. Yeah, that, yeah, that happens. Not that I'm going to do it. Not that I'm about to run out there and, you know, hunch my ex's brother. Cecil Not and Linda remain married, calling themselves Womack and Womack. They became hugely successful as songwriters and performers. They specialized in songs about couples battling, string, accusing, and reconciling. Among their recordings are the American R&B hits, Baby, I'm Scared of You, Strange and Funny, and TKO, and the British pop hits, Teardrops, Love Wars, and Celebrate the World. Womack and Womack wrote beautiful songs together, May James Hollis said. Millions of fans agreed. Did they write uh, Teddy Pendergrass? Look like another love, TKO. In a 1994 interview, Cecil and Linda talked about their marriage as the major relationship in both of their lives. Linda recalled that she had first met Cecil when she was eight and he was 14. Her father, Sam Cook, had invited the Womack brothers to their home. Cecil, she said, fixed me with this serious stare. I found him intriguing. It was kind of instant. I liked him immediately. Cecil proposed to her soon after her father died in 1964. Here he was talking about marriage and I hadn't even kissed the boy yet. And I certainly wasn't looking for another father figure. So she said no. Nevertheless, the two kept in touch for more than a dozen years. Shortly after the dissolution of his marriage to Wells, Cecil again proposed to Linda, Linda said, and this time she accepted. They were married in Las Vegas in 1979. Cecil, noting that his marriage to Murray had lasted 11 years, called that marriage a success as far as I was concerned. He noted that he was a very faithful person, but it's tough to keep a relationship going in the entertainment business. He didn't mention Mary's liaison with his brother Curtis. I wouldn't mention that either. He added, though, that underneath, I suppose, I was always thinking of Linda. Ain't that a bag of beans? So, pause. Before we move forward, I want to give you a little think piece. I've been told by one of the dirtiest deeds that I have ever met in my life that men never or rarely Rarely, let me take never out and use the term rarely, that men rarely marry for love. A man is more than likely to marry for timing. Either they were with the woman that they truly love, but they done dogged him out so bad that the woman is long past it now. You know how us women go. You know, we will love you, love you, love you. And then once we're broken, we're broken. And it's nothing that the person, man, I'm speaking about men right now, can do to fix it. So the opportunity is missed. Or at the time, the man has insecurities while he's with the woman that he truly loves because he feels like he cannot be the man that she needs. So she ends up moving past him. It could be so many different factors as to why men rarely marry the woman that they love. And then as time moves on, you have situations where men go through very vulnerable moments. And the woman who they love is unavailable because she has moved on with 
another man has created a family or with another woman. You know, it depends on what you're feeling in that moment. Either moved out of town or just moved past the broken heart that she may have received from that particular man. And the man goes through a vulnerable moment, like if he loses his mother suddenly, or he loses his job, or just um, something in his life is deeply affected. And it just so happened that the woman he is messing with at the time is not necessarily the woman he wants to be with for long term. It's just that she was there in that moment. So he, in turn, asked the woman that was there for him during his vulnerability to marry him. I always knew in my mind that it was going to happen. When I finally separated with Mary, I knew something positive would come of it. Within a few years after Murray moved from Cecil to Curtis, all three parties had reconciled. Fuck it then. We all with the person who we really want to be with, so why be mad anymore? I get it. Curtis remembered that he and Cecil would talk and then he would get with her and he would talk to her and then he and I would talk about everything else. Him and I, spirit to spirit, just like brothers. Both Mary and Curtis were credited as background singers when Womack and Womack scored a number 14 British pop hit with their single Love Wars in 1984. Mary and Curtis also both participated in background singing in a subsequent Womack and Womack concert in London. Ain't this about a bag of frigging beans? The universe is so crazy to me, y'all. There's not just an episode here. There's a whole miniseries, Will Porter said, recently summing up the events that included Sam Cooke's death, Bobby's marriage to Barbara Cook, Bobby's alleged sexual relationship with Linda Cook, Bobby's divorce from Barbara, Bobby's divorce from Barbara, Mary's divorce from Cecil, Mary moving in with Curtis, Cecil's marriage to Linda, and the reconciliation among Cecil, Curtis, Linda, and Mary. Let me tell you something. Whoever it is, Netflix, Amazon, whoever it is, you people who be watching, because I know you bitches be watching. Not to be calling you bitches, I'm sorry. But I'm telling you, somebody needs to grab this and make this a whole series on Netflix, real talk, Netflix, you need to do something about this. Listen, Netflix, what you doing? Nothing. I'm probably making up some dumbass Netflix show that you all do. Speaking of Netflix shows, if y'all don't watch the show uh, by Ali Wong called Beef, I'm telling you, it's for you crazy bitches. You road rage crazy bitches, but Netflix, I'm talking to you. Even you, Amazon. Okay, I'm talking to you bitches. Okay, if y'all don't grab this whole debauchery, of, of Bobby Womack, Sam Cook, Linda Cook, Barbara Cook, Cecil Womack, and Curtis Womack, y'all is tripping. In 1978, after Mary had recovered from her second suicide attempt, she and Curtis moved to the Mediterranean Village apartment on La Brea and Santa Monica in Hollywood. They remained together as common law spouses. The decision not to marry was mostly Mary's. After two marriages and two divorces, I was scared to marry again, she said. And for some strange, stupid reason, I felt that if I didn't get married, then mentally I wasn't totally bonded to Curtis. But it happened anyway. When you fall in love with a person, you basically are married to him anyway. It becomes that deep. Facts. Let me tell you something. I love my wife with my whole soul. I love my wife beyond the marriage. As a Libra, we understand love. Love totally encompasses us. And even when the love stops, we still love. Unless you break us. But then even in that point where we're loving, Pisces too. Even in that point where we're um, loving and the love is betrayed, we love that person no much, so much because we have chosen to love the person. It's hard for us to stop loving them. Now, we can move on, but we will never stop loving them. 
We just love the person in a different way. I'm telling you, you know, me and my wife have our issues right now, but I could never see me marrying anybody else. That is going to be my wife, even if she moves on with somebody else. I love my wife. Later in her life, Murray called her long-term relationship with Curtis normal with some good moments and enthused about the couple's physical chemistry. Our lovemaking at times was fantastic, she said. Some people make love and don't feel hardly anything, so they don't make love anymore. But we had a great sex life. Uh, so the uh, Cecil wasn't knocking you down correctly? Okay. Murray also was pleased. She said that she was able to exercise more control over her performing life when she was with Curtis. While Cecil had managed Mary's performing career, Curtis turned it back to her. He didn't want to be in control of it because he had seen what Cecil had done when he had control. On the negative side, Wells said that she was the only one bringing in money. Her relentless performing week after week, year after year, at one club after another, and at one concert after another, had provided much of the income for her and Cecil. Now it supported Mary and Curtis. Damn. Some people look at their mates as a bag. And I'm telling you, sometimes people be putting cheap dollar bets on you. I believe that Cecil was like, okay, Curtis ain't making his move with the bag. So I'm going to make my move with the bag. Because Mary already has a career. Maybe I can ride her coattails and get money along the way. Okay, and then Curtis came in later and was like, well, shit, my little brother done stole my bag. I ain't making the money that I want how I want with my wife. So maybe I should try to get my original bag back. As a young Motown performer, Mary had largely abstained from excessive drinking and illegal drugs. As she grew older, however, and her responsibilities and problems increased, she became a heavy user of both. Yeah. 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 